Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for taking time out of your schedules to uh, come over and uh, take a few minutes to learn about the ASC Renewal app. And uh, this is a new product that ASC has been working on for the past couple of years, and uh, we have since uh, decided to go ahead and uh, make it available to everybody out there. And uh, today's webinar is going to be talking about a new path to recertification, and it's going to be some... Uh, Hopefully, some interesting information that you guys will enjoy. Uh, during our webinar today, we've got a trio of folks that are going to be helping us. And uh, you just heard from Dave Capert. He's uh, sitting there and going to be behind the scenes and helping us make sure everything is flowing well. Uh, John Tisdale, he is our uh, vice president of testing, uh, special testing programs. And he is on our webinar today. And then my name is Kevin Lika. And I am the project manager for the app. And so now you guys have got some, some faces to go with the voices you're about to hear. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, first off, we're going to talk a little bit about the program details. We want to tell you a little bit about uh, what the app is, how it works, what it does. Then we'll take a look at the purpose of the app. And then we're going to discuss how the ASC Renewal App program is going to be different from traditional testing. And uh, sometimes there's a little bit of confusion about this. And so we want to make sure that we clear up anything that uh, is out there about the app, because the app is something that's totally different and totally new. Then we're going to take a look at uh, some details on exactly how the app works and go through the functionality of the app, because there are some features to the app that are out there that we have found that uh, people weren't aware of. And so we want to make sure that everybody is aware of the different features and how they work and what they're there for. And then we'll talk a little bit about how to subscribe to the program. And then we'll wrap up talking for a few minutes about our Facebook group. And we've actually got a Facebook group for app users. They can get in and kind of discuss what's going on. And it's uh, turned into kind of a neat place to hang out and talk with other technicians about their experiences with the app. With that, John, you want to go ahead and get started. Yeah, thanks, Kevin, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, just going to kind of go over the uh, app program details here at a high level. Um, we always find that we get a lot of questions about these topics uh, right up front. So we're going to address a few of these topics right up front, uh, and then we're going to drill down as we go through this presentation. So just stay patient. I think we'll probably cover all your questions, but you do have the question pane. Um, so just to, uh, <clears throat> just to give you an idea, for the uh, ASC Renewal app, Right now, the program currently, we offer all of the automobile technician certifications A1 through A9. Uh, at, at this point, uh, those are the test, test titles that we're offering uh, for uh, previously certified technicians to earn an extension of their recertification credentials. Uh, the way it works, um, you purchase a subscription to the ASC Renewal app. Uh, that's a $48 annual subscription fee, uh, plus taxes where applicable. Some states, uh, you know, charge tax. Um, so uh, the $48 subscription fee earns you as many certifications as you currently uh, have uh, current or as you currently possess. Uh, A1 through A9. If you if you are a master with A9, you get all nine. If you only have four, you get the four for one price of $48. Um, at a high level, as Kevin said, we've been working on this program for a couple of years, uh, working on the proof of the concept, really, and what level of acceptance we would see from you, our customers, the technicians that would use this tool uh, as a different way to maintain your certifications. Um, so, uh, we are still, uh, even though we've gone through a pilot and, and gone through a beta mode, um, proof and acceptance is ongoing because we are always listening to your feedback uh, about the functionality of the app, looking forward to the future about how this might grow and develop over time. So those are some of the future considerations. Other future considerations, as many of you are probably already thinking, is what about other tests? What are you going to add other tests? So uh, those are future considerations that we're looking at um, and into uh, the the distant future um, to add titles to the app as uh, you know becomes feasible and as we you know get a greater level of acceptance to the app as a tool for technicians uh, maintaining their certifications. Uh, and the way you find that is at ASERenewalApp.com, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail when we talk about how to subscribe. 
John, do you want to mention real quick why we go to the ASC Renewal App website versus just going to the ASC website? Sure. Yeah. Um, the, good question. I was going to drill into that a little bit later, but uh, now is good time. So um, the ASCRenewalApp.com is the website where you create your profile and uh, purchase your subscription to the app. Um, Unlike many other apps that you've probably bought in either the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, uh, you've probably bought those apps directly through those stores. Um, we don't sell this app through the store because it's a cost conscious measure. We want to try to keep this price uh, within a price point that's feasible and reasonable. Um, and if we were selling through the App Store, believe it or not, they take a pretty hefty percentage of your purchase price uh, in terms of their commission uh, on the sale of that app. So we sell this off-site, offline from uh, the App Store and the Play Store. John, would you also like to mention a little bit about you know why we do it through the uh, this website? Because uh, ASC is really not a app developer, and how we've got a partner that is doing this for us. Yeah, good point, Kevin. So um, so yeah, when we uh, when we ventured into this. Uh, into creating this app. Um, obviously, you know, we, uh, ASE, we're very good at, uh, at uh, bringing the industry together and helping us generate content. But when it comes to uh, the technology of, in the app environment, uh, you know, we are not the experts. So we sought out the help of uh, an expert organization out in Iowa City, uh, HLT Technologies, and they are, um, uh, they're our app developer. And they basically host this website for us and uh, they take care of you know, the back end and help us with uh, some customer service issues as it relates to the technology side of the delivery of questions to your mobile device or your PC. Great, John, thanks. <clears throat> Next slide. So what's the purpose of the app? Well, you know, the purpose of the app is really to uh, to help you, the technician, find a new way to uh, maintain your certifications. Um, and there's three main points in that, and you'll see I'll talk about these each, but convenience, learning, and maintenance. Um, you know, we've heard from technicians over the years of being in business, you know, north of 45 years, uh, or offering certification that uh, we hear from recertifiers coming out of the test centers that, Hey, you know, I, I it's inconvenient. I got to take time off work. I got to, you know, uh, I got to do all these things that are that are, are laborious to to be able to maintain my certifications. Um, and you know, when I go take the tests, I I leave and I have questions about the questions that uh, that I missed and I don't know what I missed and I don't learn anything from that. Well, we've heard you. We've heard you over the years, and so this is a far cry at answering a lot of those concerns that you've had. So with the uh, with the app. Uh, you, there's no need to tame, take time off work, and we're going to get into this in more detail, but the questions are going to come to you on your mobile device or PC. Um, no, no need to go to the testing center. You know, since we went to the computer-based testing oh, eight or nine years ago, uh, some of those testing centers aren't as convenient for folks in some of the rural areas as they are for some of you in the metropolitan areas. So testing center sometimes is a long drive and an inconvenience uh, to get there. Um, and as well as the uh, you know the security measures at the test center that some folks aren't really too uh, keen about, um, so uh, so that's part of the convenience. And then uh, as the questions are delivered to you, uh, you can answer them at your own pace when when you're ready, when you have time uh, uh, during your during the course of your subscription. We'll talk about the pacing of that in more detail a little later. But the learning aspect is really where uh, you know the the app adds an additional level of value to you. Uh, as a technician maintaining your ASC certifications um, because we're going to deliver uh, questions to you. Uh, and if you answer a question incorrectly, uh, a little later, we're going to give you a second and a third chance question on that same topic uh, to be able to you know, reinforce your, uh, create an awareness of what maybe topics that you don't fully understand and give yourself an opportunity to learn more about them. And we'll get into that more in detail. Um, we also are going to offer you rationale. So there's a, the learning aspect. We're going to give a, raf, a rationale for each answer choice uh, where we're going to tell you why the answer option A is right uh, with a brief statement and why answer options B, C, and D are wrong based on the scenario and the question. So you're going to get a little taste of, of the technical aspect of, of the question and why the answer options are, are uh, right and wrong. 
Um, and again, it's like I said, it's to identify gaps in your knowledge and and uh, like it says in the in the picture pane there to you know about making you smarter every day, uh, helping you to main you know keep up with emerging technology and uh, find gaps in your knowledge and help to reinforce them to to make you a better technician solving customers' problems. Um, and so the maintenance aspect of, of it is uh, you're you're basically you're renewing your previously earned credentials, as I said before. Uh, this is a uh, an extension of of previously earned certifications. So those are the ones that if you go to purchase the app, those are the ones that are going to queue up as the previously earned credentials that you have, um, whether they're expired or not. So um, if they're currently expired, you can and you don't need them uh, uh, renewed uh, very quickly. Um, we'll talk about the pacing again, but uh, you know this this can help you uh, bring your certifications back current if they're expired. Um, and again, it's by extending your certification expiration date. Uh, and we'll talk in detail how you're going to do that using the app. So how is this program different uh, from traditional re recertification? Everybody's been uh, been used to, uh, you know, hearing from ASE just about the, you know, uh, time you're about to expire. We we send you notifications, and you know, you come into the uh, come into the test center and take your tests just before you expire, and you're uh, re then bang, you're good for five years again. Um, so this is a this is a little bit different. So the ASE renewal that program. What you're going to do is you're going to earn a one-year extension of your expiration date uh, through the course of your 12-month subscription. So the idea here is is that if you've if you've got a buffer of let's say you got still got a two years left on your current certifications by participating in the renewal app uh, by extending your certification through the renewal app subscription that year you'll you'll continue to maintain that two-year buffer almost in perpetuity as long as you participate in the app year over year. So this isn't a replacement for traditional testing, okay? Uh, technicians are still going to take the initial certification tests at the test center and earn their certifications uh, in the secure environment. But this is a maintenance program for for extending your certifications for recertification. Again, this is for your recertifications uh, as a different methodology. Uh, it doesn't replace, you still, you're still gonna have the opportunity, folks that don't participate in the app will still have the opportunity to go to the test center and, and earn their uh, recertifications in the traditional manner. Um, but uh, if, you, if you wanna participate in the app and do it on a year over year basis and engage yourself in, in all the opportunity to uh, use this as, a, as much of a learning tool it is, as it is a maintenance of certification, tool uh, it'll provide you both of those um, and and it's through this through this process it's going to promote you know a continuous engagement um, with ASE in you know er, you earning your certifications at your pace okay rather than you know we always heard from technicians well I only hear from ASE about every five years when my certifications come up well guess what we're, you know we, we heard you again and this is a way that we can uh, stay in communication with you and offer you more than just uh, an extension of your certifications, but uh, also help you uh, with a, a new and emerging technology and, and uh, the learning aspect that the app provides as well. So how does the app work? This is where we're gonna get into kind of the, the nitty gritty. <clears throat> so, what you're seeing on the right is, uh, if you aren't currently uh, subscribed to the app, what you're seeing on the right is basically what it looks like on a mobile device. Um, this is what, uh, if you you know your certifications, if you had A1, A2, A3, and A4, you would see this on your mobile device. Okay, so um, each question answered correctly will earn you one credit towards extending your certification. Okay, so after earning eight credits your expiration date's going to be extended by one year, all right? So let's talk about the question delivery model. How are we going to do that? So what we're going to do is for each certification area, we're going to deliver you one question per area per month, okay? Every 30 days, we will deliver you one question per certification area. And you, are, you have the ability at your pace to go in and answer that question. <clears throat> If you answer a question incorrectly, don't don't sweat. 
Uh, 10 days later, we're gonna send you a second chance question. It's gonna be about the same topic that of the question that you answered incorrectly. Uh, but it's gonna be you know, a little different slant on that same topic. But what the idea here, and this is where the learning aspect comes in, is that you know, by answering the question correctly, the, the first go around, uh, you created an awareness of, hey, maybe I didn't know as much about that as I thought. And hopefully that drove you to go learn something more about that topic. Because 10 days later, when we give you a second chance, if you answer that second chance question correctly, you have just earned the credit for that month, okay? Um, so um, you'll, you'll have a third chance as well. If you answered the second chance question uh, incorrectly, um, you 10 days later, you'll get a third chance on that same topic to earn that credit for that month for that certification area. So basically every month, you're gonna get three chances per area to earn that credit towards your extension of certification where you need eight credits. So some of you have probably already done the math. You know, At this pace, it's gonna take you about eight months uh, to extend your certification one year. Well, again, this is a 12 month subscription. So we're gonna extend that content across the entire year to, to the extent where if, if using that math that I was just uh, purporting, you, you have up to 36 chances over the course of that year to earn your eight credits. So this is very doable. Uh, during the first, uh, first couple of years of this through the pilot and our beta uh, program, um, we found that, that technicians have resoundly said that this is attainable and it's, and it's very doable. Um, and again, if, if you have certifications that are expired and they don't need to be brought back current um, in, in a quick fashion, then you can, you know, if you're currently expired, you can use the app to renew those. Uh, it's just, just to understand it's going to take you about eight months to get those back current. Um, so the other thing I want to show you is that uh, when you see that picture on the right side, you see the little, um, you see the little uh, round circle there. It tells you how many questions are sitting there waiting to be answered per certification area. Well, what's going to happen with your phone is, uh, and you probably already get these with some other apps, the app will let you know when the questions uh, will be delivered uh, or when they are delivered um, through a push notification. Now. There's, uh, those are the little banners that you get. Your phone, you know, ding, it tells you, that, hey, there's activity in that app. Uh, a lot of the apps do this and it'll direct you to the, to the fact that that app provider has something to tell you. Well, ours is telling you, hey, there's questions waiting for you to be answered. So it kind of keeps you aware of, um, of when the questions are delivered and hey, it's time to go here. Uh, when you have some time, uh, time to answer questions. Um, an important point to note about push notifications is if you are if you have an Android phone, push notifications when you download the ASC renewal app, push notification default is yes, okay, and that's for any app, okay. But for an Android phone, the default is yes, send me push notifications. If you are an iOS user, your push notifications you have to go into your profile, which is um, uh, in the upper right hand corner of your app. Uh, screen, uh, you click on your profile and you'll have to go to your preferences and say, yes, I want push notifications in order for you to get those notifications and tell you when questions are delivered uh, each month. So just an important point to note about the two different, uh, the two different um, mobile platforms out there and how they work, uh, because sometimes we don't, we don't always know these things and we've learned it over, you know, just over time. So I want to point it out here. It's an important point to note. One of the other things, um, we just had one last point to make on the how does the app work slide, and that is um, when questions are delivered to you, um, there's uh, two types of questions that you're gonna see. One is gonna be purely a text-based question, okay? And, and, one, and we'll also have questions in there that have illustrations. The illustrations, you're gonna be, they're optimized for viewing on your mobile screen, um, but when you access the, you know, the the uh, question, you'll be able to pinch and zoom on those on those illustrations to be able to see more detail. Now, just a, a point to note about these, the text-based questions, these questions are timed within the app. So for a text-only based question, you'll have two minutes to answer the question. Uh, and for illustrated questions, since you have you know that media to, to sort through, um, we'll give you five minutes uh, to answer those questions. So uh, just a point to note, um, 
that uh, is, is important to know up front. All right, so next slide is how do I sign up? So <clears throat> the process is really simple. If you haven't done this already, um, you're gonna visit uh, the website, as I mentioned before, at aserenewalapp.com. And so when you get to our website, it's gonna have a, you know, some other information there and there's gonna be a little orange box where you're gonna click on the, it's gonna say click on here for a free three-day trial. It's a link to a click to uh, establish a three, free three-day trial. Um, when you click on that, what, what you're gonna see is what's shown here in this picture is the create account screen, all right? So what we're gonna do is have you populate that information with your first name, obviously, your last name, your email address is going to be your username, okay? And then whatever unique password you want to use. You can use the same password that you use for your MyASE account, um, it doesn't have to be. Uh, that's your purely your choice. But know that this is unique to access your your ASC uh, renewal app account. Um, and then of course your ASC uh, account ID. You'll have to enter that because that's going to establish your eligibility for uh, the certifications that you currently hold and what's going to be delivered to your mobile device um, if you uh, if you subscribe. So when you click on the, so you, once your account's created, you're gonna click on the little green box down there and say, hey, let's go. And, uh, and that's gonna uh, go ahead and establish your account. So let's talk about the free, so now you're gonna be into a free three-day trial, okay? So we're gonna give you an opportunity for the next slide. We're gonna give you an opportunity to uh, test drive the app before you actually make a purchase. You know, you might be saying, hey, well, you know, I really wanna test the form and function of this and see, you know, if I like it before I invest 48 bucks in this. Um, and so, great, we've, we've got a solution for you. The three-day trial is gonna allow you to uh, have three random questions delivered to your account uh, daily, okay? Um, so, just understand these these are trial questions. They're purely practice. They don't if you if you subscribe, they don't count toward your extensions. Okay, these are just test driving questions. Um, but you're going to get three new trial questions delivered once a day for three days, total of nine questions. But if you stick with the trial, um, you're going to get uh, second and third chance questions when appropriate. So if you know if you first day of your trial, you get three questions, you answer all three of them, let's say you get two of them wrong, you're gonna get second chance questions in addition to your, uh, to your uh, uh, next daily question. So you're, you could wind up, my point is, is you can wind up answering more than just the nine questions in the trial. Uh, second and third chance questions will be delivered uh, to you if you answer some incorrectly. And uh, you, can, you, can, um, you can use this to whatever degree, you can show it to your friends. Um, what you're going to notice is your your actual certifications because you've you've uh, uh, created an account and uh, so with the exchange of information we know which certifications you're eligible for. You'll start to see uh, below where it says trial uh, TR trial. You'll see that there's certification shown there, but they've got a lock, a locked lock. All right, and that's because the only way you can unlock them is to purchase a, a 12 month subscription. So, but you're into the trial. Um, and uh, again, you can you can play with the trial more than three days. It'll actually stay on your phone for more than three days. Uh, we'll just quit after three days. We'll quit delivering questions to your to your trial account. Um, but you can still play with it for multiple days. If if you don't have time in the first three days, that's okay. Um, you'll still have time to to uh, walk through the functionality. You know, get a feel for how it works and see if it uh, if it seems like uh, you're going to like it. You know, towards uh, moving towards the subscription. Um, but if so, if you do like it, you know, the next step is uh, to purchase a 12 month subscription. So at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Kevin and he's going to talk about how you can do that. All right, John, thanks. Um, I do want to back up this one slide real quick for a moment and uh, just let everyone know one of the things that we have experienced when people have tried to sign up for the app, um, occasionally somebody's going to get a message that says that they're ineligible. And they're telling us, or the app is going to tell you then to contact ASD customer service. And there'll be a phone number that'll be listed there to do so. Um, I've talked to our customer service people, and probably the number one thing that they're dealing with right now is people that are ineligible for the app. The reason why you're ineligible for the app is because you have your release status in your profile set to do not release information to others. And as John was telling us earlier in the uh, 
webinar that we have a third party provider who has built the app for us. Well, they need to be able to access your ASC record so they can identify how many certifications you actually have. And then they can pull it into their system so that that way you are delivered the proper questions. So if you get a message when you create your account and it says that you are ineligible, it's simply because in most cases, let me preface it that way, in most cases, it's because you do not have the release to others set in your profile. Uh, to change that, you simply go over to the ASC portal at ASC.com, log into your profile, and then once you get logged in, you have to go to the profile tab, click continue twice, and then that third screen is where the check mark needs to be placed, and it needs to be in the box that says release to others. But it's also a good time when you are in there, verify that your address and your information is correct, uh, because at the completion of your subscription, we're going to send you out a new certificate. And so we want to make sure that we are sending it to the right address as well. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the app itself and some of the functionality that occurs here within the app. Um, as John was telling you and showing you, um, this is what it would look like in the mobile platform. Uh, in the PC platform, it's slightly different, but the same information is there. It's just displayed differently because it's on a computer. But if you're trying to answer the questions on a mobile device, such as a phone, a tablet, things like that, you're gonna get a very uh, similar look to this screen that we see here. And this is both for Apple and Android. Uh, the screens are near identical for both platforms. In the upper right-hand corner up at the top, there's a little circle, and that is the profile icon. Uh, from time to time, you may wanna access that profile icon. And when doing so, you'll be able to go in there if you need to and change your password. So if you have forgot your password, there's a nifty reset feature that occurs and it's very simple, very easy. You'll get an email from HLT and they will hook you up and get you set up with a new password. But if you wanna change it again, this is where you would do it, is under the profile icon. You can also take a look at when your subscription expires. That information is located there. Um, from time to time, if you are having difficulty, and sometimes this happens if you, if you flip flop back and forth, meaning if you go from a mobile platform over to a PC, and then a PC over to the mobile again, back and forth, um, this can cause your data to become out of sync. And so if you find that your data in one device is looking one way and in another place it's looking different, just simply go in and sync your progress. Um, if you are having difficulty with the app, this is sometimes what we ask you to do as well. And uh, in a lot of instances, syncing the progress will fix a lot of the problems that you may be having. But that again is located under the profile icon. And then the app version ID is under your icon as well. Um, from time to time, because this is a new product, you know, we've had some, some bugs and things that have uh, cropped up over the like, last year or so. Uh, and uh, HLT has been wonderful at fixing those bugs. When people call up and have concerns with the way the app is functioning, that's one of the first questions we're gonna ask. Which version of the app are you on? And as long as you've got your app set up in your mobile device for auto update, this shouldn't be a problem. As soon as the updates are available, it'll go ahead and pull it down and you'll be good to go. But uh, otherwise, if asked, that's where you find that information. Now, the ribbons on the screen for each one of your certifications, I wanna talk about that next. And as you can see, we've got the A1, A2, A3, and the, the list kind of goes on down the screen here. But uh, there's a date that's listed on there. What's that date mean? Well, that is the date that your next question will be delivered. Remember how John was telling you that there's a uh, push notification that'll be coming your way? And that is the date that the question comes out, and that is the date that the notification uh, is going to appear. Um, one thing to kind of tell you guys a little bit about how this thing works is we actually uh, do this in advance. So the app, it takes about 24 hours for everything to kind of sync up. And so we guarantee you that by the date that is listed there, your new question will be there. But in some cases, you may find that the question shows up a little bit early, and that's perfectly fine. You're also gonna find that that date is going to update one day prior to your question being delivered. And so everything's in progress, this is normal, and this is the way the app functions. So on 
Tuesday, April 28th, if you were to go look at it on Monday, the 27th, um, you might see it pushed out 30 days. And it may have a May date listed on there. Uh, but all that means is your questions are on their way, but by the 28th, you should have a question sitting there ready to go. Now, if you want to know how you've been doing throughout the app and through your subscription, the progress of the credits that you have earned are displayed in this point right here. So it says one of eight completed. So for this particular uh, app we're showing here, this area, the A1 area, has earned one credit. And there's seven more to go. And so the little circle starts to fill in. And it just kind of gives you, gives you an idea as to how your progress is, what's going on, and how things are moving. Uh, when you do earn eight credits, the banner will turn from white to blue, and you'll get a little gold medallion that's going to appear in the corner. However, you're not finished. Remember that you have a 12-month subscription, and even though you have earned your extension, we're going to continue to deliver questions throughout the entire subscription every month, and we want you to guys to, to stay engaged and to uh, you know learn some things along the way, and so we want to make sure that happens. But when you see your banner turn blue, then you know that you have earned your extension, and then within a few days, um, the uh, app will go ahead and update the new expiration dates and so on. And I'll show you that here in just a second. One other thing I want to point out is the notification icon over here in the corner. And uh, like John was telling you, you see those little kind of reddish orange circles that appear in the corner. If you see that for any one of your certification areas, this simply means that you have unanswered questions that are ready to go. Now, the numbers are going to vary depending on how you are progressing within your app. In this particular case here, for A1, there are two questions. The reason why is there is a second chance question that's sitting there, as well as the normal first chance question. It has been delivered to this uh, screen as well. So that's why you're seeing the two there. But uh, it's not uncommon for technicians, if they forget about the app and they kind of let things pile up a little bit, uh, that you'll see higher numbers in there. And it doesn't really hurt anything. It's just simply, you've got unanswered questions. But word to the wise, I would not allow your questions to pile up too heavily. Because if you do let them pile up, what is going to happen is you get down to the end of your subscription and you may run out of time. And I've actually watched a couple of uh, technicians here recently whose subscriptions have expired and they did not have enough credits and they were waiting on second chance questions and it happened after their subscription expired. So had they just continued along once a month, answered a question in each one of their areas, this wouldn't have been a problem. They wouldn't have uh, been in this rush mode. But uh, we also understand and get it. You know, things happen and all that. But uh, again, word to the wise, if you can, uh, try to stay on top of it. You also want to try to answer these questions at a time where you can actually sit, you can think, you can uh, don't have the distractions, that you can really have a clear head. If you try to do this in between working on two cars, if you try to do this on your lunch break, uh, you may struggle a little bit. Because again, like John was telling us, the, the content is more leading edge. And so it's going to be focusing in on things that are newer technologies that you may or may not be familiar with. And if you've got uh, you know the, the kid crying, or if you've got somebody saying, hey, you got a waiter sitting over here, and all these other wonderful things that happen, um, that might not be the best time in the world to answer those questions. All right, let's go ahead and talk next about the certification progress screen. Now, again, on the certification progress, this is what it looks like when you click on an individual certification. So I've gone ahead and we've clicked on the A1 engine repair category, and this is what the screen would look like. And so as you can see up at the top, again, we have got the next question delivery date. So we do put that in there a couple of different places. So in case you miss it in one spot, it's available to you in another spot. The banner down here towards the bottom, this is going to show you your core question. Now this is the terminology that our app provider utilizes with their uh, you know, development with all their other products. And basically a core question is your first chance question. So this is the question that's going to appear every 30 days. So if you see an unanswered question in the core area, well, that's one of your, your first questions, and you'll have the second and third chance questions if necessary based on that one question. The banner below that 
that is your second chance question. So in the event that you got the first chance question wrong in 10 days of answering the question. So that's one thing I wanna really emphasize here. So let's say your core question arrived on a Monday and you didn't answer it until Wednesday. 10 days after answering the question is when the second chance question is delivered. So it's not 10 days off of the core question, it's 10 days after answering it. So this was going back to my point I was making a few minutes ago about you wanna to try to stay on top of this and answer your questions every month and don't let them pile up towards the end because if you have a problem, you're gonna to have to wait 10 days after answering the question to get that second and or possibly third chance question to be delivered. And so this will help you to manage your time a little bit better. But anyway, so that's where the second chance questions are. And then down at the bottom, you can see your subscription information again. This will tell you when your subscription is going to expire. And then the bottom one tells you when your certification expires. Now the subscription expiration date, that comes from the HLT system and the certification expires date that comes from ASE. And so that's again part of that data exchange that occurs between the two companies. And so this way they can show you what's going on. Now you may have noticed that I did skip the certification progress banner and it says review two questions up above. I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. So just in case you're wondering, uh, you know, why did I skip over that? It's because I've got another section I wanna show you. All right. Let's go ahead and dive a little deeper now into core questions. Now, core questions or the first chance question, these are those timed questions we've been talking about. And the timer is either gonna be a two minute timer or a five minute timer. And it is displayed in seconds. So you'll see 120 seconds or you'll see 300 seconds being displayed. Once the timer starts, you cannot stop it. And so you will actually be given a warning after you go to choose your question and you can get countdown. It's gonna go three, two, one, and then you have the opportunity to go ahead and say, whoa, get me out of here, and you'll be able to back out. Otherwise, once the question starts, that's it. You have to go ahead and answer the question at that point. If for any reason you decide to uh, look away from your phone, if you're going to another screen, if you close the app, it doesn't matter, the timer continues, and when the timer gets to zero, if there is no answer input, it is gonna be scored incorrect. If you did put an answer in there, and then obviously whatever it is, is that's how you'll be scored in that particular situation. Now questions are gonna come in a couple of different forms. There's gonna be text-based questions, and those are gonna be typically your two-minute questions. And then there are going to be questions that have illustrations, tables, uh, different things like that, and those questions have more time associated with them. That's why you have the five minutes. This particular question that I am showing you, you have the ability to go ahead and uh, take a look at the illustration a little bit closer. In the event that you wanna see the details of the question a little bit closer up, simply click on the question. I mean, click, click on the image, excuse me. And when you click on the image, it's going to look just like this. And then using the standard pinch and squeeze method that we can use on mobile phones, you can then go ahead and zoom in, zoom out on the question, looking at the details of the illustrations and uh, be able to then uh, answer accordingly. From there, you just simply click on it again and it'll return you right back to the question. The only thing that's gonna be different now is the timer will have continued to wind down. But most cases, five minutes to answer a question should be ample time, even when you do have to zoom in on it and take a look at things and kind of uh, figure out what you're, you're gonna answer. There is a nice little feature that's been added to the app, and that is a strike through feature. And so in the event that you're looking at the question and you're researching and trying to figure out what an open at W is gonna cause, and you say, oh no, that can't be it, then you can simply click on that little X and that'll put a strike through through that answer and then you can go back and research your next answer and then research the next one, so on and so forth. And so this will help you just uh, an easy housekeeping thing. And this is really no different than uh, what they do in the testing centers. You have that strike through feature that is available there as well. Now let's talk about one of the really interesting and really cool features of the app. And that is the question explanations or the rationales as uh, we were talking about this earlier. 
Um, this is one of the things that us as test administrators have heard over and over and over again from the technicians that uh, are taking a test is, how do I know which questions I got right? How do I know which questions I got wrong? And why? How can I learn from this? And this is one of the things that really makes the app stand out in comparison to traditional testing. With the app, after you answer your question, we are going to give you a brief rationale for each answer choice. If you answer it correctly, you'll see that the letter for the answer choice will be in have a green mark on it, and that's going to tell you then that the uh, answer was correct. If the letter is red, the green one will be highlighted, and then that will also tell you, uh, you know, what the correct answer was. Now the rationales are not intended to be these long, exhaustive training sessions. They are intended to be short, brief, to the point, to give you some information as to why one answer is right, why the other answers are wrong. If you don't understand the rationale, the idea here is, is to go out and try to learn about it. And try to learn about it either on your, your favorite online research source, Maybe take a class, attend a webinar, whatever the case may be is, uh, but go out there and learn a little bit more about it. And we're not really trying to, again, give you this really exhaustive answer here. Uh, this is more just to give you some guide guidance as to which one's right, which one's wrong, and why. And then uh, the, it's on you as the user to go ahead and figure out, uh, you know, do you really agree with this, disagree, so on and so forth. But speaking about that, um, well, actually, before we do, let me talk for just a second here about if you wanted to view the question again, you can see that there's a banner here. It says view question, a little drop down carrot on the right. You click on that little drop down carrot and the original question is going to appear. Keep in mind that the screen space is pretty limited on your phone. And so this is the reason why the question is hidden initially and just the answer choices and the rationales. Uh, when you go to expand the question, those answer choices and rationales are gonna drop down below a visible area on your screen, and so you're gonna to have to scroll back and forth. So our app provider, they uh, do this with some of their other products, and it seems to work pretty well, and it works well in our application as well. So that's why that is there. But um, if you uh, wanna see that question again, that's how you find it. Now, talking about if you have some questions about the question itself, Remember how we were telling you that a lot of the content that is gonna be found in the app is gonna be more leading edge. And this has a tendency to be a little bit more controversial. And that's simply because technicians may or may not have seen the content that's being discussed. Uh, case in point, we've had uh, questions in there that are talking about a dual clutch transmission. And I received an email from a, a pretty unhappy technician working for uh, one of the major auto manufacturers out there and says, why are you asking me questions about dual clutch transmissions? And on and on and on it went. And at the end, um, I looked him up and I found out who he worked for. And I found out that his particular uh, manufacturer was going to be introducing a dual clutch transmission within the next couple months. And actually that uh, vehicle with that transmission came out January of this year. And so the idea behind the app is we want to try to get you guys exposed to things that you may not be familiar with. We're not trying to trick you. We're not trying to be mean to you. We're not trying to do anything bad. We're trying to help you become better, smarter every day, and expose you to things that maybe you haven't seen before. And so in this case here, if you've got a question that you are kind of scratching your head about, there's a place for you to go ahead and discuss the question with other technicians. And the little thought bubble down at the bottom is your avenue now to go ahead and express your opinions about the question. The one thing I'm going to caution you about a little bit is remember how I said that some of this content may be a little bit more leading edge, and you may not be familiar with it. That's okay. What happens in these chat rooms is one of two things. Either one, somebody goes in there and they, they get on a soapbox and they really rant and rave and and tell us that, you know, ASC is dumb and you're, whoever wrote this question is an idiot and on and on and on and on it goes, right? And then somebody else comes into the room, also uninformed, and they join the party. 
And they go in there, so now you got two people sitting there just beating us up and, and saying how dumb we are and, you know, the people who wrote these questions are idiots and so on and so forth. And then somebody else goes in and they actually have some knowledge about the subject and then they can go ahead and set the other people straight. But what we have actually found is that people who answer questions correctly rarely go into the comment area. It's only the people who answer the questions incorrectly that go into there. And then when that happens, you've got multiple people that in some cases are misinformed and it just kind of turns into this little uh, complaint session. And then it takes, you know, some other technicians that have got uh, a little bit more knowledge to go in there and help straighten them out and set them right. Um, you know, from time to time, you know, there's some really valid points that go on in there. And uh, we do monitor those uh, chat threads from time to time. But uh, more times than not, I find a lot of uh, complaining that goes on that's really unfounded. Um, the questions that are built, they are not written by ASC. These questions are built by a technical committee. There's about 12 people that get together. The questions are written by the technical committee. They're reviewed by the technical committee. And then they go through a second set of review from independent technicians that are part of our review committee. And so by the time the questions get out into the app, they've been looked at by multiple sources by, and multiple people. And so in most cases, the questions are pretty solid. They're not always perfect. I'm gonna throw that out there. You know, we, we try our best. We don't try to put out anything that's gonna be bad or controversial, but occasionally it happens. And then through the comments, we can go ahead and make uh, repairs to those type of questions. But overall, the questions are highly vetted before they go out. And in most cases, there's usually something wrong with uh, a lack of understanding or a hole in that knowledge that the technician has that's causing those comments to be created. So anyway, that's what the uh, comment bubble is for. Now there's one other icon I wanna point out, and it's up here in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. And this is for question performance feedback. So in the event that the app is doing something wrong, so you were delivered a question, and let's say the illustration didn't show up, or you were delivered a question and you received a, an error message when the question was delivered, or something with the functionality of the app went wrong. This is what this button is for. You go ahead and click on that, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna capture the question, the question ID, and then there'll be a place for you to tell the app provider what is wrong with the question, and then they will take a look at it through their customer support folks, and then go back in and try to identify what the problem is. This is not an area to complain about question content. This is about functionality of the app. So I wanna make sure that we're really clear on that because if you go ahead and say, this question sucks buttermilk, well, guess what? They don't know any better uh, because they're not the technical experts like you and I are. They're just gonna say, well, you know, hey, our app's functioning properly. Uh, we don't know what to tell you. So if you've got a question or you have comments about the technical content of the question, you can use the thought bubble at the bottom. Otherwise, use this arrow or this box over here for functionality issues with the app. All right, let's go ahead and uh, continue on here and talk about um, reviewing completed questions. This is where I was telling you before that I'd come back to it. So when you go ahead and click on that progress bar, you can then go ahead and take a look at any of the questions that you have previously answered. So in this case here, you can see your progress. We got 50% that's going on. You've earned one of your eight credits and you've answered one of the two questions that were delivered to you correctly. The questions themselves, they will appear here, so you'll get to actually see the body of the question. We, we call that the stem, but you get to see the actual question itself as to what's going on. If you've got it right, you'll have the green check mark. If you got it wrong, you'll have the red X. Regardless of how you scored on it, if you click on the, the little arrow just to the right of the check mark or the X, that will then take you into the question itself, and then it'll look something similar to what we saw here. So then you'll be able to see the question, uh, what's going on, and then you can take a look at the comments other people have made, so on and so forth. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. All right, John, so I've got a question for you. So I've got time left on my current certs. You know, I just went and recertified about eh, maybe a year, year and a half ago. 
and I've got well over three, maybe even four years before my certifications expire, why should I subscribe to the app now? Yeah, that's a great question, and that's uh, that's the prevailing question we've heard from folks through the first couple of years of this. And and the short answer is is that you know this is a this is a new way to look at uh, ASE recertification. Um, again, this is a maintenance program where we're going to have you basically try to maintain your certifications without expiration. And by participating in the app, regardless of how many years you have as a buffer. Uh, towards you know the total expiration of that certification, um, you know you have the opportunity to maintain that buffer by participating in the app and extending your certification uh, a year for every year that you participate in the app. Uh, so there's a double benefit again, maintaining the uh, extension of your credential to where it almost will never expire uh, unless you take a year off or you know uh, take a couple of years off and let them lapse. So as you you know, continue to participate in the app, um, but also, uh, you know, using the app as uh, a means, as a learning tool, in addition to uh, extending your certifications. All right. Well, thanks, John. I mean, that, what you're saying to me there, if I'm hearing you correctly, is basically by participating in the app, I can have certification without expiration, and I could potentially never have to walk into a testing center again unless I want to go ahead and expand on the current certifications that I have or I have to recertify a test that is not available within the app. Is that right? That's absolutely correct. Well said. Very good. Cool. Sounds pretty good to me, John. All right. One more thing I want to talk to you guys about, then we'll go ahead and get we will go ahead and get to your questions. And we have a Facebook group, believe it or not. Seems like everybody's got a Facebook group. Um, but our Facebook group is actually private. And so only technicians with paid subscriptions can join the Facebook group. But within the Facebook group, this is a great place to go ahead and get to know some of the other users within the app. But we also use this to identify problems that potentially have occurred within the app. So if the app's not doing something that you think that it should, this is a good place to let us know. Also, if you like what the app is doing, this is another great place to let us know as to what's going on. Because not only do we want to hear the bad, we also want to hear the good. And there's lots of good comments that uh, come out. And uh, it's a pretty neat group of uh, folks that have uh, joined the Facebook group. Um, I'm one of the guys that uh, does uh, keep an eye on the group on a regular basis. And uh, I've uh, got to know several technicians out there pretty good through uh, the Facebook group, you know, talking to them and conversing and whatnot. So uh, it's one of those things that, again, it's a benefit for subscribers. And then one of the things that we do with the Facebook group is we also give people sneak peeks as to what's going on. So if there's a new version of the app that's out, you'll find out about it here. Um, if there is anything that is of importance around the app, we go ahead and make announcements and discuss this in this location as well. So uh, if you guys are into Facebook, you know, we welcome you to join after you have subscribed. All right, John. Well, we've uh, almost got to the end of our webinar here, and uh, we've let all these fine folks uh, sit and listen to us talk. So what are we going to do to reward them for their time that they've spent with us? Well, so we've got a, we've got a limited time offer that uh, we're, we're extending at this point. Uh, you know, as kind of a, a launch uh, ex extension, limited time offer for for the app. So, uh, if you purchase an app subscription between now and June 30th, um, at the point of your subscription, we are going to extend any of your eligible and current certifications. We will extend them by six months just for signing up. Um, and then, what's going to happen is. But through your participation in the app, when you earn your eight credits, you know, somewhere eight months down the road, um, we will then again extend those certifications by the one year. So you'll get a you'll get a six month bonus uh, for signing up between now and June 30th. Um, again, I said I said it. I want to highlight it. It only this only applies to new subscribers. Um, so. And it only applies to certifications that are current. All right. If you have certifications that are expired, uh, we are not offering an ex the six month uh, onboarding extension 
uh, for currently expired certifications, only for current certifications. So I want to make that distinction. And again, this offer is good between now and through June 30th of this year. So just a little bonus for uh, signing up and and you know taking a shot at this and playing with it for a year to see if see if you like it. And um, so that's. Uh, that's uh, just a little bonus we wanted to add in to uh, incentivize folks to, to give this a try. We're excited about it, and we think you will be too uh, if you give it a try. You know, John, not to mention as well that uh, right now with the testing centers, uh, due to the current crisis that's out there, that uh, testing centers availability is very limited. Uh, this is actually a, a great idea. This is something that we can uh, do to help the technicians out there to uh, you know buffer them through this time period so that they can uh, maintain those certifications. And in some cases, you, if you do, do the math and look at it right now, you could sign up uh, very shortly here. You'd be able to go all the way through the end of the year and earn that year extension on top of it. You may not even have to go to the testing center. So uh, there's some real good benefits here with this uh, offer. And um, I hope uh, folks uh, can take a look at it and see the value of it. Yeah, that's a good point, Kevin. And and again, folks, you know, we're in trying times right now. And and uh, this is one way to, to help folks, you know, during this time when test centers are, are closed and, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll get uh, get back to a new state of normal here soon. But uh, but this is going to help you keep your credentials current and uh, maintain your status in your in your career. All right, guys. Any questions out there? And uh, Dave, I know you've been monitoring in the background for us here. Um, any questions that we potentially have not answered through the webinar today? There's a number of questions here that people have been typing into the questions pane, and they relate to many different aspects of this program. Um, fees is, is fairly common. There's a thread with that administration, how long the time is based on where they're at in the continuum of, of their current certification window. But let's start with a simple one. And that is, is there any plan on doing an app for the initial testing or is this is gonna be strictly for renewal? Sean wants to know that. Yeah, the, the app is only for renewal candidates. Um, people that have not earned a certification previously are still gonna need to go to a testing center and they're gonna still need to to um, prove their knowledge in that environment. But afterwards, once they have earned that initial certification, then the app is there and available to them and ready to go forward. All right, thank you. And then here's another one kind of related to, I know we keep talking about app, but several times it has come up today about um, is an ASE retest available online now? And I think sometimes that infers maybe using it on a desktop. This product can be used that way too. Am I right, Kevin? Yes, it can. There, there's a PC version of it as well as the mobile version of it. But one of the things that we really want to be clear about is the app is really not a test. You know, the test, those are taken at the testing center. And that's when you would go in, you do the once every five years. Um, for those that take tests on a regular basis, there's not very many open book unsecured tests that go on. Yes, we're asking questions, and yes, you are earning credits and so on and so forth, but really the app is about maintenance of your certification, and it's not about testing. If you, you want to do testing, then you can go ahead and go over to the testing center, but if people can really grasp the difference, I mean, this is really a different, unique product altogether, but if you can grasp the difference, that this is a maintenance product and it is not a test, it will help you uh, to understand the product better and it also make it more enjoyable. Because the questions that we ask in the app are questions that we would not typically ask in traditional testing because it's not gonna be always common knowledge. But with the app, folks have time to uh, answer the question, they have time to look at resources if needed to help them answer the question. And so it's more of an open book type of environment. And again, we're really not trying to test people, we're trying to help people and fill those, uh, next, those gaps in knowledge. And so that's where the big difference comes in. So does that answer the question, Dave? I think it does. And the next one we've got comes in from Edward. And Edward asks a question about, will there be a master account of sorts 
from multiple fleet shop users. I guess what he's uh, raising the question of there is uh, analogous to my ASE on the uh, on that side of the fence. Okay, and it, I'm kind of interpreting this is are they looking for uh, the ability to be able to do like a bulk purchase? So if you're in a fleet shop and there's a, a dozen technicians in there, if they would like to obtain uh, a, a subscription for every technician within the shop, uh, we can definitely do that. And uh, we're going to give you an email address here in the next slide. And uh, just drop us an email and uh, tell us what you'd like to do. And then we've got a form and the process that we go through. And if they want to do a, a bulk purchase and have uh, multiple people participate, uh, they can do so. Um, if you are the manager of an ASC account and you're used to looking at the progress of your technicians and trying to see where uh, multiple people who have subscribed to the app are and how far along they are, that feature currently is not available within the app, uh, but that is something that we are looking at adding in the future as an enhancement, and it's probably going to be in 2021 when that is going to occur um, or even later than that. But uh, right now, the app is housed by our partners at HLT, and so they contain that data, and there's really not a way for it. There's no dashboard, per se, for an employer to look at to follow how all the people within the shop are doing uh, on the app. But we are looking at uh, doing that, like I said, in the future. So a couple different ways to kind of interpret that question. I hope I, I answered the question, one of those two answers. What, I'll add one one point to that though. Just uh, but for tracking your employees through your My ASE account, um, their progress as soon as they earn their credits uh, within about you know a, a few weeks, I'm going to say of them actually earning their extension, that's going to appear in their My ASE account. So you will still have the same functionality of seeing where they stand with respect to their uh, certifications and their expiration dates uh, through your My ASE dashboard, employer dashboard. Um, but there isn't one to monitor the monthly uh, progress through the app, as Kevin just mentioned. All right, John, good point on that. And then, of course, I think this might be a sign of the times, but right now with this product really being for A1 through A9 on the auto side, we've got questions about what about heavy-duty truck or some of the other series? Yeah, that's, that is a very, very common question. Uh, heavy-duty truck, L1 is another one that we hear a lot about. And as John was telling us at the beginning of the, the webinar today, we are still in that acceptance phase right now and taking a look at to see, is this a viable product? Do, do you guys out there like this product? If you like the, the A series, and that is our largest group of people that we have out there, if this is a popular program and if there's a lot of interest in it and there's a lot of people participating, then of course, ASC is going to go ahead and jump on board and add additional titles. But if the app is just kind of meandering along and there's not very many people interested in it and they're just kind of, you know, picking it up here and there a little bit, then this, like other things, you know, may end up uh, wrapping up. Uh, we're not seeing that. There's no indication that that is going to occur. So let me just really put that out right away. But the truth of the matter is, if the A series is very, very popular, then we will go ahead and do the investment to build out into the other test series. And this is really up to our end users as to what is going to happen. And uh, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, folks are really going to like this thing and they're going to want to jump on board. I guess the more people we get, then the more we will add to it in the future. And John, you want to add anything else to that? No, I, th I think that pretty well sums it up. Again, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we've made, we've, we've created this uh, because we've been listening to you. And, and as we continue to offer this, we're going to continue to listen to you, the, the end user um, who we're trying to service, uh, offer this service of this uh, opportunity to earn your and maintain your certifications in a different way. So uh, we're just going to stay attentive and, and we'll make adjustments moving forward um, as they uh, present, as opportunities present. All right, real good. So here's one now I think that indicates the, uh, to some extent, the unfamiliarity with the new program and the familiarity with our old way of doing business is that Stephen asks, my certifications are not due for a few years. Can I still participate in this program? If so, will it extend my expiration dates? The answer John, to that question that is, 
Sure. The answer to that question is absolutely. Um, you know, you are you're a you're a prime candidate for this because again, <clears throat> however many years you have current on your certifications, you'll you'll maintain that same buffer of of years uh, in perpetuity. Again, this is as you've heard us say, this is certification without expiration. So year over year, where you earn your eight credits, you'll continue to extend, uh, you know, out a year, and you'll maintain that two year, three year, four year buffer wherever you stand right now. You know, within the five years that you initially earned with the last time you went to the test center. All right, thanks, John. And uh, fee clarification. Sean asks, if I pay app fees, am I also paying the normal test fees? No, there is just one fee. It's $48, and that includes all of the A series certifications you have previously earned. It's one price, whether you've got one or you have all nine. And then if your particular state you live in requires us to collect sales tax, then we add that on there. But that is the only fee, but it is once a year. So it's a 12 month subscription for $48. And then at the end of that 12 months, you'll need to purchase a second subscription for another $48. The only reason you'd have to pay test fees is if you had other series, if you had an L1 or your truck, in addition to your auto that you wanted to keep current and they're not currently offered in the app, yes, then you would pay the, the standard test fees in the test center to, uh, to you know, extend those uh, in the test center environment. So just want to make that distinction. Okay, good. Thanks, John. And then Jonathan wants to know, what about if my certs are years expired? Can you recertify through this? Absolutely, Jonathan. This app is actually intended for someone just like yourself. We know that there's a lot of people out there that have earned certifications throughout the years, and for various reasons, they have not kept them current. And so we welcome anybody who is expired. And we've actually had a couple of folks, um, I've been taking a look at some of the information that we collect. We've got people that have been expired since the 90s that have joined the app program they've gotten on board, they've earned their credits, and now they are a current master technician. So absolutely, if you are expired, we welcome you, we want you to come on board, uh, but the only thing is keep in mind that it is new content. So if it is content that uh, you are uh, familiar with or you've been, you're working on in the shop on a somewhat regular basis, you'll probably be just fine. But uh, yes, we want, uh, expired as well as current technicians to uh, hop on board and uh, we want to get everybody uh, back up to being a currently certified ASC te certified technician. And then Stephen notes that he's been getting random ASC test questions to his email. He said he enjoys these questions, but is it related to this program? No, that's well, our random. Go ahead, that, those those are questions that we're we're throwing out right now. Uh, we we understand that there's a there's technicians that are you know uh, uh, working different shifts now, and so that was just something that we launched here in the interim um, as just kind of a a thought provoker and to keep uh, you know keep uh, people engaged. Um, we call it Test Question Tuesday. Uh, so you're getting a question uh, every Tuesday about a different topic in the automobile uh, area. And so um, we just thought that would be a fun thing to do and, and uh, throw them out there, let people answer them and comment about them. So we're getting some chat on Facebook about them and you know, getting some emails back from folks about them. So uh, it's all good, but that's just a, that's just a fun thing that we're doing uh, right now you know, during this trying time uh, to keep people engaged and, and uh, you know, give them, keep them occupied. You know, John, too, though, we should also mention that the thought provokers that are going out there um, some of those questions actually came from the app as far as the trial questions are concerned because the trial questions are pretty much open out there for anybody to go ahead and uh, take a look at. So some of those questions or those types of questions uh, are coming from that area, but the way that those questions work, the level of difficulty of those questions for the, the Tuesday questions are somewhat similar to what you're going to find in the app. So to answer the question there, if you like those thought provokers on Tuesdays, you're probably going to love the app because the app is going to be very similar to that, and you'll just be able to get that 
the question per your certification, and then once a month, we're going to send that one out, and then you get a reward at the end. You earn an extension on your certifications. So uh, there is some some really good benefits to this, and if you like those questions, you're probably going to like the app questions as well. Yeah, that's a good right. point, Kevin. Thanks. And then Mark asks about if he also has parts specialist registration testing, um, what about price on that if he subscribes to this? But I, I believe it doesn't have any influence on it. Of course, parts specialist is not on this, but uh, any other light you can shed on that? Yeah, it's it's basically for somebody that has anything other than A1 through A9, they're going to need to maintain those certifications through traditional testing. And so part specialist would be something that's kind of unique. And so that would be one you would have to maintain outside of the app. Um, I hear oftentimes guys tell me that they've got L1 and they want to get their L1 into the app. And as of right now, L1 is just not part of the app. Um, we're hoping at some point in the future, potentially be able to bring it in. But if you can maintain all of your regular tests and only have to go recertify once every five years, uh, you're, you're probably in, in pretty good shape. If we use the example of a master technician with L1, they cannot get one single appointment to recertify all those tests. They're going to have to make two trips to the testing center. So by participating in the app, they eliminate one of those trips, and then once every five years, they'll have to go recertify for any of those other tests that are out there. And again, this is assuming that that technician is a master technician. So they've got eight automobile series or nine automobile series that they'd have to do in one sitting, and they would have to come back a second time to take L1 in a second sitting. So that's where the benefit of this comes into play. But I've talked to technicians that are a great distance away from a Prometric testing center because where they live in the country, and some of them have to uh, schedule two days some of them take uh, time off and spend time with family. Some of them go ahead and rent a hotel room. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of different uh, things that people do. So the app is really going to help uh, to eliminate some of those logistical issues they deal with. But again, if you have certifications outside of A1 through A9, uh, at this point, as of today, we don't have a, another, another solution. But in the future, if the app is successful, we're hopefully, hopefully going to have a, a solution for them as well. Are we there? Did the app shut off? Nope, we're good. Oh. So Russell was wondering what the application code on the sign-up screen. Oh, the act activate. There's an activation, activation code. code. Yeah. So that that's something that we use. That's kind of an admin function that we use. Um, in that example where the where the individual asked about signing up multiple people in a fleet, we uh, we may use a, mul a bulk purchase and then have to use an activation code rather than a credit card to activate that account. So that's what that's all about. That's not something you're going to use. That's something we use on our side, but it's visible to you because it's in the it's in the template registration template yeah it's not a coupon code or anything like that because i thought about that too looking at that going no oh, it sounds like a coupon code but yeah no it's it's not for that purpose okay thanks wayne states that he's got an expired certification he says he understands it would take eight months to get it active again but his question is how long will it be good for initially a oh, great question so when you're certification is brought current. Basically, think about it like this. On the day that you sign up for the app, assuming that you are going to earn all eight of your credits, take the start date of your app, add two years to it, and then round it up to the nearest expiration date. So as most people know, we have expiration dates in June and December. So let's say, for example, I've got an expired certification. I signed up for the app today, and it's April 23rd. So I go ahead and sign up. I answer all eight of my questions. I'm good to go. So April 2001, I add two years on to that. That's going to be April 
in 2023. And then I round up to the next window, and that's going to be June of 2023. So after eight months, I'm going to end up basically with about 18 months or so of uh, good certification time. I'm going to be, be current and certified. Now, the reason why we're doing that, because you're going to probably ask that next, why would you do something like that? What we want you to do is resubscribe to the app in a year. When you resubscribe to the app, by pushing you out that two-year window, this ensures that you will not expire during your next subscription. And then when you get to the end of your year two subscription, we then would just tag on 12 months, and it would just keep going and going and going, and you will never have to worry about expiring while participating in the app. The only time that you have to worry about that is if you do not renew your subscription, then at the end of your subscription, um, it's going to expire uh, at the next expiration date that we have. It's a little bit of a complicated question to answer, but I hope what I said there makes sense. So two years from the date that you started your subscription and then go to the nearest expiration date in the future, and that's when it'll expire, and then you just, you'll do the same thing every year. All right, thank you. Chris presents a comparison of the app product in terms of cost compared to the traditional program. And, and the statement he makes is it's $48 a year to extend for five years, that's 240. And then research for as many tests you take is capped at 129. Why is the app twice as much? I'm not sure that that's, that that's clear. If you wouldn't mind just clarifying that, Kevin. Absolutely. And actually, you're not taking into account the test registration fee. So you've got to put that on there as well. And the, the cap price on a recertification test is in the one, um, John, help me out with this, is 169, it's like, 171. It's $171. It's like $171, $171. With, yeah, with the registration fee. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's what the maximum cost would be if you went to the testing center every five years. So we absolutely understand that the app is a little bit more expensive than uh, doing regular recertification. But my question simply becomes, how much is your time worth? You know, the time that you have to take off away from work to go recertify, how much is that worth to you? How much is the convenience worth to you? How much is knowing what answers are right, what answers are wrong, and then the big question is, the knowledge that you will gain by using the app, what's that worth to you? I mean, all of those things have value, but it's up to the individual as to whether or not they find it valuable to them. But ultimately, if $70 is really a deal breaker for somebody and they don't want to participate in the app over $70, well, the, the testing centers are available and, you know, they can go recertify every five years and everything is, is good. Um, we fully understand and realize the app is not going to be for every single person that's out there, but the majority of the people that have participated in it, one, love it, and two, after getting into it, they really don't have an issue with uh, the price point. But again, I understand we're in trying times and every dollar matters, and so I'm not trying to dismiss or you know, talk it down, but that's the reason why it is a little bit more expensive than regular testing. But again, this is not a test, it's a maintenance program, and there's a lot of convenience that's factored into it. It's kind of like buying a gallon of milk at the grocery store versus buying it at the convenience store around the corner from your house. You don't pay a low price at that convenience store in comparison to a grocery store, and the app is kind of the same way. All right, Kevin, I think we've got a few more here on, on timing and, and where somebody stands. So Jeffrey wonders, so if you have one expiring in three months and you start the app, it will take eight months to renew it? Correct. So yeah. ASC, we, what we did in response to the health crisis that's going on out there, anybody who has got a certification that is expiring on June 30, 2020, was automatically given a six-month extension, and that's because of the 
uh, difficulty of locating testing centers. So at this point, there should be nobody that is in the situation where they're going to run out. They're in jeopardy of expiring in June of this year. So if you were to sign up for the app now, you are been pushed out to December of this year. You could theoretically, if you stayed on top of it, you could earn your extension as early as November or possibly December. And then at that point, we're going to go ahead and push you out, as I was saying before, that two-year window from the time you start your subscription because you are in, you're in jeopardy of potentially expiring. And then after that, it goes on to the one-year extensions afterwards. So this depends on, on where you are in your situation. But by adding that six months on right now, by subscribing before June 30th, um, that should give just about everybody enough time to stay current without having to go to the testing center. And I guess I also should note real quick here is on the day you subscribe, so if you decide after this webinar you want to go subscribe, you're going to get your first round of questions after entering your credit card. So on April 23rd, you've already got your first round under your belt potentially. And then if you do the math forward, you would wrap up around uh, December 23rd, or potentially could wrap up by December 23rd and uh, earn those extensions and uh, be ready to go. All right, Dave, do we have any other questions? So the only other ones we had were really along the lines of just, you know, where they were at in that window. And I think that's been clarified now about how it works with the one-year extension. Uh, one of the important ones is, is that who do we contact for help? More information. Great. Good question. And I've uh, advanced the screen a, a minute or two ago, and there's a couple of addresses on there. Uh, the first one is www.ascrenewalapp.com. I encourage every single person listening to my voice to go to that website, and at the very top in the center, there's a button that says FAQ. Take a look at those FAQs. We have put in about 28, 29 FAQs that explain this program in extreme detail, and it comes up with all the different questions that we have been asked over and over and over again, and I think that there's a lot of really good information that can be found there by looking at the FAQs. Uh, in the event that you looked at the FAQs and your question is not addressed, well, send us an email. And our email address for the app is the myasrenewal at asc.com. Send us those emails, and John and I monitor that email uh, box on a daily basis, and uh, we will try to answer your question for you. But I will tell you that if the question is in the FAQs, um, we'll answer your question. We absolutely are going to, going to help you, but we'll point you back at the FAQs. And so uh, really take a look at that. A majority of the questions that you may have are typically going to be answered there, but otherwise we welcome those emails. We'd love to talk to you guys. And uh, right now, all of us are working from home because of the health crisis that's going on out there. And so uh, we just ask that you uh, give us a little bit of time and uh, we will uh, they'll gladly get back to you just as quick as we can. All right, Kevin, one last one, and then we're going to wrap this up. So Brian wants to know if he correctly answered 12 questions in one year, does that mean that he's going to get four extra credits for the next year? Great question. And uh, no, that does not. And what happens is when your subscription expires, uh, the first thing that will happen is the subscription locks. And so all the questions that you've answered previously and, and all your progress, um, is frozen at that point, and all you get to do is, is see what you've done, and there's nothing else that's going to occur. Then, when you resubscribe, the timer is reset back to zero, and then you start all over again earning credits. So, we like to really talk about the app and think about the app like a magazine subscription. With a magazine subscription, you pay for a year, you get 12 issues of the magazine. Whether you want it or not, it's going to come and it's going to show up. At the end of the subscription, if you don't renew, well, you don't get any more magazines in the mail. And the app is really kind of the same way. We'll deliver questions every month, and as you answer them, great. When you get to that eighth credit, that's when the banner changes and 
you know, the, the skies open up and everything is wonderful and, you know, you've earned your extension, we apply it to your records, so on and so forth. But the additional questions for that last four months is basically kind of a bonus question. And one of the things that ASC is looking at doing is taking a look at who answers those uh, bonus questions, basically, or who answers the, the most number of questions, or probably say the least number of questions correctly. Um, there are several different recognition programs that ASC works with in conjunction with. And so people that participate in the app, we've got to be able to help them identify who the superstars are, you know, who, who are, are the, the really uh, top-notch techs. And so by answering all of those questions, uh, there's going to be some future enhancements that we are going to uh, add to the program. But as of right now today, um, those questions are, you know, bonus and uh, they, the credits do not carry over into the next subscription. All right, Kevin. Well, thank you very much. And I think we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and wrap this session up. I want to thank everybody for spending their time with us this evening. And hopefully you've learned a bit more about the ASC Renewal app. There are endless details with it. Kevin's given you the contact information. He also made reference to that all important FAQ. So please check that out. That's real important. And with that, on behalf of John Tisdale, Kevin Leekus, I am Dave Capert, and we hope to see you at another webinar soon. Thanks, everyone.